Hello, my name is Peter Smitherman. I'm an orthopaedic consultant at the Royal Adelaide Hospital. Today we're going to do a little brief uh, video looking at how you should do a simple reduction manoeuvres for a collies or distal radial fracture. In the interest of time, this video will not include uh, uh, consenting and uh, looking at the analgesic requirements for the patient. Obviously, these are very important things to be done. But for the interest of the time of this video, we will not be including that uh, here. And there will be other lectures and, and talk and material to help you with that uh, at another stage. In principle, uh, and what's important to understand for a distal radius fracture is that the fracture is dorsally angulated, impacted, but is also radially uh, impacted and radially angulated. And therefore, for any reduction maneuver, those are the maneuvers that need to be countered, and that position needs to be countered. When the patient is appropriately consented and relaxed, uh, what uh, is done with counter traction by a second person holding here, uh, you put gradual traction on the, on the wrist and hand. This is done by holding the fingers. One of the most common mistakes that is seen is a person that yanks very hard quickly and that stimulates pain and causes muscle contraction. So what is very important to do is bring that traction on gradually and slowly talking to the patient and keeping them relaxed and calm at the same time, checking that they are breathing, have good oxygenation and saturation. The second most common mistake that is done is that it is pulled at the whole entirety of the hand, usually is a big grip like this. In doing this, yes, you do get the uh, distraction and you can reduce the dorsal uh, um, angulation, but what you miss is that radial impaction and radial angulation. So to do that, what you should do is actually pull just on the thumb, or if you want, the thumb and the index finger. In doing that, you're actually lengthening the radial column and disimpacting that radial uh, fracture as well. So as I said, I normally do this just with one finger on the, the thumb and, the, and the, uh, the base of the thumb so you're not uh, damaging the skin of that finger, and just doing gradual lean back over a period of time, gradually increasing that traction maneuver here. So once you have uh, used this um, traction method over a gradual period to try and disimpact the fracture, sometimes there are some additional uh, little maneuvers that need to be done. One uh, thing that sometimes needs to be done is if the fracture is totally displaced uh, uh, dorsally, you have to sometimes increase that fraction deformity and then lever it back down to hinge it back into position and pull it down. This is most common in young fractures uh, and in young children that have a very thick intact periosteum. Once you are happy with your position, yeah, uh, if you're very sport, you can have a third pair of hands, or whilst you're still holding this, your assistant can start putting on the veil band uh, to actually put the initial uh, traction on whilst you are maintaining that traction and holding that fracture in a reduced position. Now we won't go through the uh, particular techniques of the layers of, of, uh, uh, of this um, material, but there's a few things that need to be remembered. Over the fracture itself, you do not want the, the, the uh, veil band too thick because obviously that is going to uh, reduce your ability to manipulate the fracture and hold that reduction. However, you want it thick enough that it is not going to cause any pressure sores or any uh, issues with the uh, uh, skin and pain for the patient afterwards. Great. Now we put the plaster in and get to, and dip it in the water. And this is a simple uh, uh, back slab that has been described in previous videos in, in terms of its design and position. This is all being done whilst you're holding that traction on the, the fracture to keep it reduced. And then you put the, the, the plaster into position and then put a crepe bandage over it. This is where we can tuck the edges over. And again, you're tr you've got to make sure that the knuckles are free so that it actually allows hand function to be maintained and doesn't cause any issues. Now, when we do the maneuver to actually uh, hold this um, uh, uh, fracture, you must to make sure throughout the whole technique you're using only the palm of your hands and not your fingers, because you don't want to put finger indents that can cause skin pressure during the process here. Using the uh, cold water gives you plenty of time to actually uh, manipulate and reduce this as well. 
uh, and it gives you time so the plaster does not set while you're putting this on. So we're still with the counter traction maintained. If you can hold that, please, Jackie. You are trying to pull, as I said, to lengthen this radial side. And now you've got to, now you've done that direction, you're using that palm to reduce the fracture down. And you're, you need to be putting this manipulation over the plaster and over the fracture. And you're having counter traction on the other side, again, with the flat of your hand. You can change your position slightly as you go this, again, maneuvering it so that it's the flat of your palm the whole way through this. And then at the time you also then, when you've got this, if you're happy with your position, you may want a longer broad, but with very flat hand doing this. Now the reasons just while that's setting and we've got that held, the things to remember with any reduction, if you hold just, if you imagine this is your plaster, if we have only two points of reduction, it will toggle and not held reduce. So any reduction should be held with three positions of, uh, of fixation, because then that will allow indent and hold, maintain that. So this is why when I'm doing this, I'm putting pressure on the fracture and I'm putting the counter on on both sides up here with the flat of my hand to try and hold those three points of reduction.